This video is brought to you by Soccer.com, North America's largest online soccer retailer. Don't forget to use coupon code 1SR4U13 at checkout for free shipping within the U.S. on any order of $100 or more. Hey guys, Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com, bringing you a retro unboxing plus on feet video of the Nike Tiempo Ronaldinho. Now guys, it takes a lot of time and effort to hunt down some of these retro shoes that are pretty hard to come by. So if you do enjoy the retro unboxing series on my channel, be sure to support the video with a like. Now the first thing you'll find inside of the box is actually the tag on the shoes. Um, this is uh, the tag that kind of tells you what the significance is of the three color stitching on the shoes themselves. Yellow stands for family, orange stands for samba, and red stands for joy, as you guys can see. Get that out of the way. They also include this little sheet here that gives you all the technical specifications of the shoes themselves, which we'll go over later in the video. And then of course they do include a string bag like they will pretty much any top end model and have been doing for quite a while. It's a brown string bag matching the color of the shoe. You do have your Nike logo outlined in gold in the middle. You have your accent stitching all around the bag, which looks really, really good. On the back of the bag, you will find another Nike swoosh on the bottom and the 10R logo right there in the middle. So we'll get that out of the way. And all that's left in the box are the shoes themselves. So we'll get these out of the box and get this box out of the way very, very quickly. So here is a look at the shoes themselves. This is the Dark Cinder colorway, also known as brown. And uh, personally, I really like the look of this colorway just because it has that very old school vibe about it. Now, this shoe originally released in 2006, back when Ronaldinho was still at Barcelona, uh, more or less in his prime. And really the significance of this shoe is that he is really the first ever soccer player to get his own signature model. Now, what I, when I say signature model, I mean it's his own specific shoe designed for himself. Now, obviously the original Brazilian Ronaldo had his R9 branded Vapors um, throughout his playing days. And obviously right now we have Cristiano Ronaldo with his own branded colorways of Vapor um, in modern times. But never did they have their own specific model that only that particular player wore um, in pro the professional game, of course. And uh, that really just goes to show how big of a deal Ronaldinho was when he was back in Barcelona in his prime. And really, uh, when he was at his best, he really was one of the best in the world. And in terms of skill, I still think that he is probably the most skilled player in the game today. If you've ever gone on YouTube and just looked up some of the stuff he does with the ball, it's absolutely incredible. And he was definitely deserving of his own signature model. He had this as his original signature, and he ended up having a second one as well um, that... Nike kind of discontinued after that when he kind of lost favor in Europe altogether. Now as far as the shoe itself goes, it is really high quality and just overall very very unique. You can see that the shoe still bears the Tiempo name and overall just has a very similar styling but at the same time it's very very different. Now what's cool about this shoe is that Nike said that uh, Ronaldinho actually had a really big kind of influence on the design of the shoe itself. Um, obviously, it's kind of difficult to say if that's true or not, um, but you can definitely tell that this is a shoe that has a much more old school vibe than um, your average soccer shoe, especially the ones that you find nowadays. It's made of very high quality materials. The entire upper is made from high quality kangaroo leather, and it actually weighs quite a bit because of how qu high quality and how much natural material is actually featured on the shoe itself. So the entire upper is kangaroo leather, and it's a really unique form of kangaroo leather as well. It's not really a thick padded one. It's more of a thin uh, minimal stitching. It has a very kind of shiny covering on it as well and it's just unusual. It doesn't have the same kind of feel um, as a normal kangaroo leather soccer shoe would and I'm not sure if it's just because it's brand new. I'm not sure if because it's a little older. Um, I almost want to wear these guys just to see how they would actually feel once they're broken in. It's not a particularly valuable older shoe um, but it definitely is very very cool and they're still hard to come by in brand new condition. Um, these ones are my size so I probably will maybe at some point try to wear these things just because out of curiosity. Um, one of the cool elements about this shoe is kind of the minimal stitching on here. You can see it reminds me very, very much of the Nike Premier that Nike has just unveiled. The stitching pattern is very, very similar. It's very open here. There's pretty much no stitching on the instep, which was apparently one of the major requests that Ronaldinho had was to get very minimal kind of stitching and very um, have a very clean surface here on the instep. You can see you have this very exaggerated tongue that covers the entire lacing system, which is kind of unusual. And that's actually made from a very high quality kangaroo leather as well. 
Kind of gives the shoe a little bit of a goofy look in my opinion, but uh, definitely something that he wanted on his shoes and he wore it very proudly. Um, you do have your gold Nike swoosh here that wraps all the way around. Again, a very similar design element that you're going to find on the Nike Premier. It goes all the way around, but it actually cuts off a little bit further back. As you guys can see, the Nike swooshes don't actually line up. This one ends here and this one ends here, which is a little bit different than what you're going to find on the Nike Premier. And it kind of looks goofy on the instep in my opinion. You do have your... Um, embossed Nike logo here in the heel with your three color stitching, your 10R logo going over the um, Nike swoosh itself, a little pull tab here at the back, your Ronaldinho 10 logo in gold right there, and the gold itself is really nice looking, really kind of um, a grainy leather with that metallic finish, looks really really good. And what's cool here is they actually added an extra strip of leather over top to kind of reinforce that kind of push off point on the outside of the boot, which is actually a really really good idea. Um, like I mentioned, you do have your full tongue. It says something right here in, I would assume Portuguese or Brazilian, I'm not sure what the language is. I think it's Portuguese, but um, it's probably a variation on Portuguese or something like that. It says something under this tongue, and then it also says something under this one as well. I'm not sure what it says, mainly because I don't speak that language. But for any of you guys that do, and you want to read it for me and post a comment down below, you definitely can do that. The entire tongue is leather, which is definitely a nice thing. You have your 10R logo right there, and you can see that there's a very kind of extended forefoot area with minimal lacing there, again, to create a very clean element here on the front of the shoe, which was apparently one of his major requests in designing this particular shoe for himself. Um, the liner on the inside is actually made from natural leather, which is something that you just don't see anymore. This back part in brown is extremely soft, natural goat leather, which uh, obviously this is something that Nike is using on some of their shoes today, like the uh, Lunar Gato 2, of course, and it's actually very, very soft and makes for a very comfortable fit inside of the shoe, which you'll see a little bit later in the on feet portion of the video. Central lacing system, as you guys can see, I'll give you a quick look at the insole itself. It features a synthetic brown leather finish on the outside, your embossed Nike logo there in the middle, your 10R logo with your accent stitching all the way around, gold stitching bordering the, sh the insole itself. And it's pretty much a foam insole, but it's a lot more heavy duty than what you're gonna find on most of their modern Nike releases from 2013, 2012. It's pour on all the way through, as you guys can see, articulated, of course. Then you actually have a high density foam here in the, in the arch area, just to provide a little bit of extra arch support. Overall, a very high quality insole, and it's not too much different from what we have today, but it definitely is a little bit nicer in my opinion, and provides a much softer feel. Um, obviously, it weighs a little bit more as well, which was not one of the design elements in this shoe. Um, it definitely has a good weight about it, and I'll weigh it in for you guys just so you can see what the difference is between this shoe and some of the more modern shoes. Now, as far as the sole plate and stud pattern itself goes, it's still very, very similar to what you're going to find on the Nike Tiempo Legend. Um, it still features pretty much the exact same stud pattern, with the major difference being the studs themselves were actually more of a rubberized material with a little bit of texturing. Um, as opposed to a harder plastic, which was apparently one of the requests of Ronaldinho, mainly because it made for a little bit better grip on the ball when kind of controlling and making moves and stuff like that. And overall, it definitely is a really good idea. You have your four bladed studs in the heel, and then you have your four on each side of the forefoot with your two support bladed studs in the middle. The studs themselves are actually fairly long, so um, grip should not be an issue on this particular shoe. You have your 10R logo here in the middle, and you can see that you have kind of a really metallic gold underlay on the sole plate itself. Um, with the 10 logo going all over there, really looks good. Has a very high quality vibe about it and just feels very heavy duty. Um, this is a very solidly built shoe. And for that reason, I'm really kind of excited to wear them. I just, I don't know why. Normally I don't have an urge to wear older shoes just because I know what they're gonna feel like. But this is one of those shoes that I've just never worn and uh, definitely has sparked my curiosity. Um, so that's pretty much it as far as the unboxing portion of this video goes. And I move on to a quick weigh in so you can see how heavy these guys are. For the sake of comparison, I thought it would be fun to weigh the Tiempo Ronaldinho alongside the modern Tiempo Legend 4. Keep in mind that both of these shoes are a size 9 US, so this is a very fair comparison. We'll throw the Legend 4 on the scale first. And you can see that these guys weigh in at 9 ounces, which is about average weight for a modern day soccer shoe, especially for 2013 releases. So we'll take this off the scale, and we'll throw on the Tiempo Ronaldinho, which doesn't feel heavy by the way, but it is kind of... Uh, surprising in terms of how much it weighs in comparison to most modern soccer shoes and you can see that these guys weigh in at 11.2 ounces so there's a 2.2 ounce difference between the Legend 4 and the Tiempo Ronaldinho which is a noticeable amount of weight definitely both in hand and on feet but like I said this shoe is completely made from natural materials even the heel liner is lined in natural leather and it definitely goes to show that the quality standard 
and the overall vibe of the more traditionally styled soccer shoes has changed over the years from 2006 to 2013. So that's pretty much it as far as the um, weigh-in portion of this video goes. And I'll move on to quick on feet so you can get a better idea as to how these shoes fit and what the sizing is like. All right, here's a look at the Tiempo Ronaldinho's on feet. And these shoes just have an unusual feel about them overall. They definitely require some break-in time to allow for the leather to soften up because they feel pretty stiff from right out of the box. And the thickness of the leather is somewhat unusual as well. It's not overly thick at all. It's a little bit on the thinner side and the highly polished finish is just really unusual. It doesn't feel like any other leather shoe that I've ever worn. And uh, like I said, that's why I'm really curious about actually wearing a pair of these for myself, perhaps even doing a play test on them one day. As far as the overall fit of the shoes go, um, they fit kind of tighter to be completely honest. I was expecting this to be a much wider fitting shoe, but it isn't necessarily all that wide. Again, I don't know how much the leather is going to stretch. Just to give you guys an idea of the width of the shoe, that's what it looks like on my foot. So I wouldn't say that I'm at the max of what this shoe can handle, but I'm definitely um, not too far away from it. Um, so I'll put the laces back under there. The tongue is definitely a really cool feature of this particular shoe. Um, I'm sure it looks pretty goofy to most of you guys. It looks pretty goofy to me as well, especially when you look down and you see that there are no laces. Um, but to me, it's one of my personal favorite elements of this particular shoe. As far as sizing goes, I'm wearing my usual size 9 US here. And the fit and length is pretty much perfect. So they absolutely do run true to size if you're interested in ordering a pair of these for yourself. If you can manage to come buy one for a good price, um, eBay is going to be your best bet. Uh, but that's pretty much it as far as the on feet portion of this video goes, and I'll leave you to my final thoughts. All right, guys, that's it for my retro unboxing of the Nike Tiempo Ronaldinho. If you guys want to see some high quality images of this exact pair here, to give you a better idea as to what it actually does look like in person, be sure to check out the retro section on my website. I'll leave a link down below in the description. And also, be sure to check out some of my other retro unboxing videos. I'll leave some annotations on screen. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. And if you enjoyed the video, be sure to support it with a like. Subscribe if you haven't already for daily videos on all the latest soccer gear. You can find links to all of my social media down below in the description. And other than that, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. And as always, thanks for watching.